framing raises certain moral issues. Should it even be allowed? Doesn't it oversimplify issues in a way that could be dangerous or at the very least unfair? And doesn't it distract us from what really matters? And what is the difference between framing and manipulation? We are not going to answer these questions in this episode. Instead, we will present several views on the moral aspects of framing. And it is up to you to form your own opinion on this issue. There is some overlap between the various views presented in this episode, but one thing will hopefully become clear. Although the question regarding the moral aspects of framing seems pretty straightforward, the answer is anything but. Framing is, is nothing more than a political game. Uh, politicians are trying to, to, to seduce us into voting for them using superficial images and slogans. Reality is obviously much more complex. I think, personally, I think framing is dangerous. It's a form of populism. And, you know, personally, I would never use it. As a scientist, my work focuses mainly on climate change. I believe that uh, mankind has a moral responsibility to fight global warming. As scientists, we must present the results of our research in a convincing manner in order to influence public opinion. It is therefore important to think about how we frame these results. And if we have a moral responsibility to counter global warming, we also have a moral responsibility to come up with good frames. There are people who are living in this country illegally, who cross the border by breaking the rules. These people are illegal immigrants. There's no two ways about it. Our opponents refer to them as undocumented workers. But this, this is a frame. And they are using it to, 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 to cover up the truth. This frame, and the use of frames in general, is immoral. There are people who live in this country without proper documentation. Some of them have lived here for 15 years or more. These undocumented workers do the dirty jobs that no one else is prepared to do. Some of them have two or three jobs and don't take a dime from the government. In fact, certain parts of the economy would collapse if not for them. We profit from these people who make our lives more comfortable. Our opponents refer to them as illegal immigrants, but this is a frame and they are using it to cover up the truth. This frame and the use of frames in general is immoral. Guys. Guys, guys, listen up. Guys, listen up. Now, our opponents, they have a very powerful frame which states that they are tough on crime, right? Which implies that we're not tough on crime, even though we're tougher on crime than they are, right? They don't even bother going after white collar criminals. So I'm not interested in discussing the moral aspects of framing we need to come up with a frame of our own and we need to do it fast. Eh? Otherwise the whole country is going to believe the, the, the nonsense that they're spouting as the truth. Now that is the moral issue, white collar criminals. Right? Let's get to work. What is and what is not a frame? There's no such thing as objective reality. Everyone perceives things differently, so there cannot be a single criterion for determining whether or not a certain message constitutes a frame. One person's calculated frame is another person's principled standpoint.
Personally speaking, I am against frames and I would not consider using them under normal circumstances. However, our opponents keep coming up with powerful frames that help them to attract voters and sway public opinion. I believe we have no choice but to participate in the game of framing and reframing. I don't believe in these traditional types of development aid. I mean, I've been there, I've lived there, and I believe that instead of giving poor people fish, we should teach them how to fish. Framing, this is the essence of what I believe. I mean, we cannot and should not encourage dependency. We should empower people. Trust me, subsidies and development aid are toxic in the long run. They really are. Framing superficial, uh, slogans one-dimensional. Are philosophers small-minded? Absolutely not. In fact, some of the greatest philosophers had a big impact precisely because of their powerful slogans. Like Thomas Hobbes, he famously said, Homo, homini, lupus est. That means wolf, man is wolf to man. And Marx's critique of the capitalism is often summarized like the rich get more rich and the poor get more poor. These phrases, they're simple, not because these men were simple thinkers, but because they were great thinkers. I don't know much about politics. It's pretty complicated. I believe that Politicians should use plain language to say what they want or what they are doing. Is framing good or bad? I'm not even sure what framing is. A famous quote by the American journalist H.L. Mencken states, For every complex problem there is an answer that is clear, simple and wrong. Well, this is a perfect description of a frame. Ronald Reagan once said, facts are stupid things, and was widely dismissed as a trivial, shallow B-movie actor. However, when Nietzsche says, there are no facts, only interpretations, his words are hailed as a profound philosophical insight.